So this is a really old blade. In fact, it's the original blade that came with the table saw when I bought it about 10 years ago. And since I've gotten it, I've filled up that bag about once every six months. So you figure that's probably 18 to 20 bags worth of sawdust that that blade has generated. And most of that sawdust has been MDF, which is notoriously bad at dulling blades. Now, at no point during the 10 years that I've owned this table saw did I ever clean, wax, or sharpen that blade. So I'm thinking this one is going to be a pretty good upgrade. But that got me thinking, how much better is this blade going to be than that one? Well, I think I can measure that. Let me show you what I've got set up. Well, I guess the new blade passes the it'll cut your finger test, but let's try to be a little bit more precise. So I got my cross cuts let in, and I have stops for forwards and backwards, and I have my blade set for two and a half inches high. I'm gonna use a four by four, as some scrap wood to test through it. Now I'm going to be measuring the sharpness of that blade in two different ways. I have a power meter connected to the table saw and that's going to tell me how much power the motor is using as I cut. The duller the blade, theoretically, the more power I'm going to use. So the other metric I'm going to be using is a spring scale. I'll be pulling that from this clamp from behind. The harder I have to pull, the more pounds it's going to show. And theoretically, a sharper blade should be easier to pull. So before I start cutting, I thought it would be interesting to look at the teeth of the saw blades under magnification. The very edge of each blade is really the key factor there. That's where you want to see a nice, sharp, crisp edge. And every one of these teeth are just beat up. You also see a lot of sawdust and burnt wood and all that on the face of the tooth, which isn't going to help either. Now by comparison, take a look at the new blade. I mean, that's just beautiful. It's perfect. Hard crisp edge on top. The uh, face is perfectly flat. That, that's really the ideal. So I'm going to do a couple of passes without actually cutting anything to establish a baseline of what it takes to move the sled through the blade and how much power is normally consumed without cutting any wood. So I was looking through the results and the data is actually pretty interesting. The first column shows the uh, results from when I pushed just the empty sled through. The uh, watts shows around 280 on average, which I'm sure is just the uh, motor spinning. And it took six and a half pounds of force to push it through, which is relatively a lot. But uh, I'm sure most of that was just the resistance from the uh, sled guides running through the uh, channel on the table saw. Now once I added the 4x4, the wattage jumped up to 1300 watts, and the uh, amount of effort it took to push it through uh, also jumped up to 13.7 pounds. But when I did that first run with just the empty sled, I know 300 watts was just spinning the motor and 6.5 pounds was pushing the sled. So with the subtraction, cutting through a 4x4 with the old blade took a kilowatt worth of power and about 7 pounds worth of effort to push it through. Now when I switched over to the new blade, the uh, power consumption was only 900 watts coming through that 4x4 and uh, about 10 pounds of force to push it through. So subtracting out what it took to move the empty sled through it, it was only 600 watts to cut it and a little over 3 pounds of force. When I look at the final results, between the wattage and the uh, pounds it took to push it through, it's about 50%. That's half the amount of power. It's like having a table saw that's twice as powerful. 
and the uh, pressure it took, 50% reduction, that's just a lot safer not to have to grind it through. I mean, I went almost 10 years without changing that blade, but I gotta tell you, based off of this, I think I gotta change that blade more often. <laughs>